A few months ago, a friend asked me to look at her lawn tractor. The complaint was that the cutting belt was slipping, even though it had been changed several times relatively recently. The tractor is a Briggs & Stratton Murray Select Twin that came out in the year 2000. Upon looking this thing over, it seemed like there hadn't been too much regular maintenance recently. It really needs an oil change and to have everything greased. But it was still driving and being used right up until the cutting deck had these belt issues. At first glance, the cutting belt appears to be in good shape, and it's still around all the pulleys. On this tractor, the cutting belt is engaged and disengaged using this lever. When pushed forward, the belt is tensioned against the engine pulley and should spin those blades. When the lever is pulled rearwards, it releases that belt tension and the blades stop spinning. With tension released, we can remove the drive belt and examine the pulley bearings. The right side spindle is pretty tight and doesn't feel too good, but it still turns without a huge amount of effort and would probably work okay. Take note of where the pulley is in relation to those steel guards, because once we look at the left side pulley, it's looking a little off. The pulley is basically sitting against the deck and is pretty loose. Well, we'll call that extremely loose. In fact, the bearing has completely come apart and the pulley is the only thing holding that spindle in there. Looking underneath the mower deck, this is where the blade should be positioned, and this is about where it was sitting. This is a pretty extreme failure, and there's no wonder there wasn't enough tension on that belt to spin the blades. But luckily for the tractor and everyone involved, nobody was hurt and the only damage done was to the spindle hub assembly. To take care of this, we've got some new parts. First up, a new drive belt. The one on there was apparently still working, but it looked pretty rough, so I figured it was a good time to replace it. We also have a new idler pulley since the bearing in the one on the deck seems pretty loose. And of course, the main thing we're here to replace are the two spindle hub assemblies. We're going to be replacing the hub assemblies as a whole unit. If the aluminum portion of your hub isn't damaged, it's possible just to replace the bearings, but in this case it was actually cheaper, and a better idea considering the severity of the damage, just to replace the whole thing. In order to start replacing parts, we need to separate the mower deck from the tractor. In this case, that means removing these four retaining clips and their respective washers. There's a retaining clip at each of the four corners. The rear ones were a little harder to get to, but needle nose pliers took them off without issue. Then we can remove this retaining clip that holds in that pin for the front hanger of the deck. We can tap on it to get it moving and then lift up on that hanger and slide the whole thing loose to drop the deck onto the ground. Then we'll finish separating the cutting belt from the deck pulleys and lift it up out of the way. And once we separate the four links that the retaining clips were holding on, we can finish separating the deck from the tractor. The last remaining part is the tension spring that clips onto that engagement lever. And we can crab walk that deck away from the tractor. It's a bit of a tight fit between the tires, but if we turn them fully in one direction, we can make it work. And now that the deck is fully detached, we can finally take a good look at it. First, we'll flip it upside down and remove the blades. It's definitely a good thing we're replacing both of the spindle assemblies, because even the one that didn't explode is not feeling good at all. Although this one is just comically bad. Before removing the blades, we'll clean up that fastener a bit to make sure we can get a socket on it. Luckily we can, and we have the impact gun to make spinning it off easy. Then we can remove the nut, the small washer, and the large flat washer before removing the blade itself. We'll remove some of the detritus that had collected under the blade and try to knock out the spindle shaft. There's a fair amount of rust in the splines, so these are a little bit stuck. We'll thread the nut back on to make sure we don't mess up the shaft's threads. Would a hammer have made this easier? Yes, but where's your sense of adventure? And after a few more taps, we can unscrew the nut and fully knock the shaft loose. And once we lift up that splined blade adapter, we find the remaining pieces of the bearings. That's a bearing cage, but there are no ball bearings left to be found. And with the shaft loose, we can lift up the mower deck and slide it out of the way. Oh, yep, there are the ball bearings. Sure, those look good enough to reuse. The next challenge is removing the inner race of the bearing from the spindle shaft. If I were at home, I would probably heat the race of the bearing, clamp it in the vise, and hammer it out that way. But when you're just sitting in the driveway and have limited tools, you gotta work with what you've got. Just like before, we'll thread on that nut to help protect the threads. And basically what's happening here is we're holding onto the inner race of the bearing and using a breaker bar like a hammer. It's not the nicest thing for your wrists, but we were able to get the first race loose. 
And once we were able to remove that stuck inner race, we were also able to remove the bearing spacer. But we still have that second race stuck on there. This one proved a bit more difficult. We tried the same method of holding onto it and hammering with the breaker bar, but it just wasn't getting anywhere. So we'll break out a 2x4 and turn the whole shaft into a hammer to try to break that bearing race loose. It took some time, but eventually it did start moving. And eventually, with a bit of persistence and determination, the other race came loose. And we were able to remove it as well as that pulley spacer. And what used to be a seal for one of the bearings. It appears the tractor ran over some plastic netting at some point, and then the heat from those destroyed bearings melted it all to the spindle. It took a fair amount of force to remove that clump. It was pretty glued on there. And now we're going to clean up the spindle hub bolts as best we can. We're going to try to reuse these, so it would be nice if they came out in one piece. If we try to remove them with all that rust and gunk on them, our chances will be reduced. So we'll give each of the bolts a tidy up with the wire wheel before trying to remove them. This would also be a good use case for heat and penetrating oil, but since the bolts are going through aluminum and they're likely corroded together, it would probably still be hit or miss. And once the exposed threads of the bolts are about as clean as we can get them, we'll flip the deck back over to get at the bolt heads. And we'll use the impact gun to remove them. Some of the bolts also hold in other parts, so we'll make sure everything goes back together the way it came apart. The first four bolts came out peacefully, but unfortunately, the last one did not. In hindsight, it might have been a better idea to break the bolts loose before removing them. As it was, that spindle hub was kind of hanging off that one bolt, and it might have contributed to its failure. But whatever, four out of five ain't bad. And finally, we have one of the old spindle hubs removed. But before we completely throw that thing away, let's take a closer look at it. First, there's the bolt that broke off. There's definitely a lot of rust in there, and presumably some corrosion between the aluminum and the steel. And how about the inner surface of the spindle? Yeah, it, it looks like it took a beating. There are several clearly visible grooves worn into that bearing spacer. It does seem like this spindle failed a while ago, and it was used for a while with it falling apart. The shaft itself also has its fair share of rust, which is probably why everything was so stuck together. So now, how about we take a look at the new and the old parts. They do appear identical, and the bearings are the right sizes. The replacement spindle housing also has a grease fitting, just like the old one. But, replacement spindle hubs don't actually come with threaded holes. That's because the bolts that the factory uses form their own as they're tightened down. These bolts are just barely bigger than the holes. That way the spindle is basically acting like a lock nut as they're tightened down so they won't rattle loose. And that would be fine if we had five factory bolts, but alas, we only have four. But fortunately, we can replace that fifth one with the standard 3 8 inch bolt. While it would probably be possible to just force that bolt through without making a tapered end, it might not be easy. So we'll just go ahead and use a tap to cut threads in the spindle housing. Since it is just aluminum, the threads are easy to cut. And there we go. Now we have one hole threaded to use a standard fastener. We'll make sure to match those up when we put it back together. Now we're ready to install the new spindle assembly onto the deck. But first we'll clean up the mating surface with our pine wire brush. And once it's about as flat as it's going to get, we'll drop on the spindle housing. The first bolt we'll install will be the one we already threaded a hole for since that can be done by hand. We'll also reinstall the belt guards and make sure everything goes back together as it came apart. And with that bolt threaded most of the way in, we'll go ahead and install the other four. For these, we'll just line them up and use the impact gun to tighten them onto the spindle. But we won't tighten any of them down all the way until they're all started. We're pushing the spindle assembly up against the deck as we get these threaded in. Then, with everything in place, we'll torque them all down to 25 foot-pounds. I don't think I was able to find a torque spec for these, and 25 is just a guess based on the size of the hardware and the material they're going into. And it's nice to know that all five bolts are evenly tightened. And now that the new spindle hub is in place, we'll reinstall the shaft and the pulley. We'll apply some oil to the shaft, which will make it easier to reinstall onto the bearings, and will hopefully prevent a little bit of rust. Then we'll install the pulley spacer and spin it around to spread out that oil. And we'll slide the shaft into the new bearings. We'll give it a few taps to get it started, and then we need to manually pull that brake away from the pulley to get it fully installed. Now we have the shaft fully installed, and for now, that brake will hold it in place. Before we reinstall the blade, we'll give it a few passes on the belt sander because that edge is pretty beat up. We're not looking for surgical sharp because we don't want to encourage chipping of the edge, but we do at least need some kind of cutting edge. 
We'll switch from side to side on the blade and let it cool down a little bit in between so we don't overheat anything. And after a few minutes of sanding, there's our edge. It's kind of a two angle job, which in my experience can kind of help keep the blade sharp for longer, but it's not going to cut quite as well as a single angle. For these old blades that probably won't be serviced again anytime soon, this should do just fine. And back of the deck, we'll reinstall the splined blade spacer. Then we'll drop on the blade, making sure to center it on the spacer. And we'll reinstall the two washers. We'll apply a little bit of oil to the threads and get the nuts started. Before getting it tight, we'll wiggle the blade around and spin it a little bit to make sure it's properly centered. And we'll use the impact to tighten it down a bit more. By holding the brake away from the pulley, we can see that it's centered and spins nice and easily. In order to torque down the blade fastener, we'll jam up the blade with a 2x4. And with that held still, we'll torque the nut down to 70 foot-pounds. Again, I couldn't find a factory spec for this mower, but that's a pretty common blade torque, so we'll just go with that. We'll hold onto the brake and make sure it spins easily, and that it stops quickly once we release it. And everything looks great, so I think we're done with that side, because we've got to do the whole thing again. Hopefully, this side will come apart more easily since the bearing wasn't as destroyed, but we'll just have to wait and see. Once more, we'll clean up the fastener and remove it with the impact gun. Then we can remove the washers and the blade. And unlike the other side, that splined spacer just lifted right off. And we can just use our trusty 2x4 to knock the shaft loose. And look at that, there's not even a bearing race on it. This side should go pretty quickly. And just like before, we'll clean up the exposed bolt threads. And now that we can actually see the bolts, it's clear that these are not the factory hardware. This hub is in better shape because it's been replaced in the past. But for our purposes, that doesn't really change much. We'll finish cleaning up the threads and then remove all of the bolts. On this side, the pulley brake is kind of in the way of one of the bolts, so we'll just kind of jam it to hold it out of the way. And pretty soon, all of the bolts have been removed and the hub can be separated. For the new hub, since we don't have any of the factory bolts that will easily make their own threads, we'll just go ahead and use a tap in all five holes. Just like the bolt we used for the other side, the hardware we'll be reusing are 3 8 by 16 bolts. And once we've finished cutting the threads, we'll reinstall the hub onto the mower deck. We'll get all the bolts started by hand, and make sure to reinstall the belt guards. And with everything finger tight, once again we'll go around and tighten all of the bolts to 25 foot-pounds. And once we've touched up the blade, we'll reinstall the shaft and the splined spacer. Then on goes the blade, the washers, a few drops of oil, and the blade nut. And again, we'll jam up the blade and torque the nut down to 70 foot-pounds. The oil on the threads means the fastener is a little bit tighter than the spec, but the rust probably also increases friction, so I feel like they're probably counteracting each other there. And again, we'll make sure the blade is centered and spins easily. It's a little bit harder to manually disengage the brake while spinning it on this side, but I think everything will be just fine. And there's one more thing we're going to replace on the deck while we're here. The part numbers I found, as well as the packaging for the new pulley, call this an idler, although I would call it a tensioner. Either way, it's a bit loose and the replacement was cheap, so we'll go ahead and install it. With the deck off, this is a super easy replacement. We'll go ahead and spin off the nut and slide off the old pulley. Then we'll compare the new and old pulleys and make sure they match up, and once we're sure that they do, we'll slide the new one into place. Then we'll tighten down that nut to 30 foot-pounds. Again, that's really just a guess going off of the size of the fastener, but it should do just fine. The new one spins nice and easily, and doesn't have all that play like the old one did. So it seems like the deck of the motor is in good shape. But we're not done quite yet. Even though it was still working, the mower's drive belt looks absolutely terrible, so while we're here, we're going to replace it. On this mower, pressing the pedal on the left side takes all the tension out of the drive belt. We should be able to use that to help us get the belt off. But because of the way that works on this mower, the belt has to be locked completely in place so that even if there's no tension on it, it can't come off of the pulleys. That means, as far as I can tell at least, we have to actually disassemble stuff to get this belt off. By holding down the pedal and pulling on the belt, we can start to get it off of its drive pulley, but we can't really get it out of place without taking anything apart. While we're at it, to get it fully out of the way, we'll fully remove the deck belt. 
Now we'll try to remove the drive belt. There might be an easier way to go about this, but I was just going off of what I could see. Unfortunately, it's not visible from this camera angle, but there are two rear idler pulleys that we'll need to unbolt. The belt is held up against the pulleys by guards, and something needs to be removed to get the belt out of place. Next, we need to separate the belt from the front idler pulley, so we'll remove the two small bolts holding this bracket to the frame. There's also this third bolt which holds the belt in place and keeps it from coming off of the pulley. Obviously, if we had to, we could just cut off this belt, but in order to install a new one, we're going to have to remove that bolt. The other option would be to remove the pulley. I started to do that here, and then I stopped. To be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure why. I guess I didn't want to disturb it, and I thought it would be easier just to remove that guarding bolt. I was wrong. That special bolt is only partially threaded and is held down to the plate with a nut on the other side. So we'll hold the other side with a wrench, and break it right off. Now that we're not under the tractor and can see it clearly, the threads are not looking so hot. And with the size of the bolt, I should not have been using that setting on the impact gun at all. Since that smooth bolt is pretty specific to this application, I wasn't able to find quite the right thing, but I was able to go to the hardware store and get this bolt. This is a 5 16 inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nut since the threads don't travel all the way to the base of the head. Since the belt would never touch this while spinning, it would probably be fine to leave it as is, but just for kicks, we'll sand off the last inch or so of threads to make it nice and smooth. After smoothing it out, we gave it a quick coat of paint just to keep it from rusting too badly, and then we bolted it back to that bracket. We'll install the new belt onto the pulley before tightening the bolt down, just in case it can't come off again. This customized bolt is just a little bit shorter than the old one, and the belt can slide on and off of the pulley. This isn't ideal, but the belt would have to be pushed up at a pretty specific angle, and because of where the components are located, I'm not sure if it could even do that anyway. So we'll give it a try with this bolt, and if it's a problem, we'll have to go get a longer one. Now the bracket's ready to be reinstalled, but before we do, let's take a look at the new versus the old belt. The new one seems to be the same length, which is a good start. The replacement belt was a very cheap one, so who knows how long it'll actually last, but at least it's better off than the old one. So we'll thread the new belt up into the body of the mower, and hook it onto our pulley bracket. We'll thread in the bracket bolts just hand tight for now until we're sure we have everything in place. Then we'll reinstall the two rear idler pulleys and get them both hand tight. It's a little tricky to get to everything, but we'll make sure the belt is hooked back on all the pulleys the way it was before. To install the belt on the final pulley, we'll depress the pedal, get the belt in place, and then release the pedal to apply tension to the belt. And once everything is in place, we'll torque down the rear idler pulleys to 30 foot-pounds. And we'll torque down those two bracket bolts to 18 foot-pounds. And after a quick systems test, everything seems okay. The belt has a good amount of tension, and it's released when the pedal is depressed. We also tried to force the belt out of place by lifting it up over the end of that bolt, and it didn't really want to go anywhere. So I feel fairly confident that it won't be a problem. And with that last check, it's finally time to reinstall the mower deck. First, we'll reinstall the deck belt tensioner spring. Then we'll slide the mower deck back underneath the tractor in the same way it came out. Having the front wheels turned gives just enough space to get the deck into place. And once everything is approximately where it needs to be, we'll start reconnecting the link bars. We'll start with the center two bars, and we'll lift them up and slide each into place. Then we'll reinstall the washer and the clip. Then we'll lift up the deck a little bit to get the rear link in place and install a washer and clip. On the other side, we'll repeat that same process to install the other center bar. Then again, we'll lift up the deck a little bit and get the rear link installed. It's worth noting that having the deck in the lowest possible cutting position will make this all a little easier. Then we can reinstall the rod that holds the front of the deck to the frame of the mower. We'll get it started in one side by just lifting up on the deck. It was proving a little difficult to line up the other side, so once again, our trusty little 2x4 will save the day. With that placed under the edge of the deck, we can easily get the rod into place. Then we can reinstall the clip, and remove the 2x4. We'll also raise the cutting deck back up, and make sure everything seems to be in place. Then we'll climb under the tractor again and get the belt for the mower deck into place. We'll start with the engine pulley and then feed it around to all the others. For the belt guards on this mower, you can just pull on them a little bit to get them out of the way. And with that where it needs to be, we can finally reinstall the tensioner spring for the deck belt. 
and with the lever pushed forward to engage the deck belt, we can check the alignment. The belt appears to be in the right place, and the tension feels good. So, okay, everything is finally back together. The only thing left to do is to take the mower for a test drive. Or, I suppose, a test cut. We did a few circles with the deck disengaged, and everything seems to work just fine. Then we'll engage the blades to check that system. And again, everything seems to be working great. So I'd say this repair was a success. There were a few bumps along the way, and it could have been easier with the right tools, but we managed to get the job done, and that's what's important. This tractor could definitely use some other general maintenance, and we need to grease those spindle hubs, but for now, I think we'll call it a day. 